Hello, and welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm your host, Eugene Edwards, coming to you live from Los Angeles. Now, before we get uh, into today's episode on the cage system, I want to take a quick moment and acknowledge that the guitar world lost, uh, obviously, an absolute giant yesterday. Uh, Eddie Van Halen was undoubtedly one of the most innovative and influential guitar players. He completely changed what was capable of the instrument. And so we want to say just thank you, Eddie. Thank you for all that you gave to us. And, uh, and in your honor, we'll do what I'm pretty sure you want us to do. We'll just keep playing guitar. And that takes us into today's episode. Uh, we're going to discuss an extremely effective system that will help you advance your guitar playing, the cage system. It might sound complicated, but today we're going to break it down for you. Plus, as always, we'll be announcing the winner of the Fender Play Gear giveaway, so stick around and see if you've won. Uh, first, though, please welcome our special returning guest who will guide us through this lesson. Is there a doctor in the house? Dr. Molly Miller. Hi. There Good you to are. See yes, you. a round of applause for Ms. Good to see you. I'm having a little technical difficulty in my end, so if I freeze up, move on without me. Teach, teach, teach the masses, if you will. I'll do my best. Okay, well, um, the real quick bio, you, you have a doctorate in guitar. Uh, not many of our guests have one of those. Also, you've recorded and toured with artists like Jason Mraz. Uh, you've been with the Black Eyed Peas and many, many more. Tell us though about your gear. What, what's, what are you playing today? I am playing a Fender Telecaster and I also have a strap behind me that I will be playing. This Tele is uh, like two and a half years old. I got it on mm -hmm. Craigslist. Uh, it's a, a 52 reissue. I love it. And then, um, yeah, the guy I got it from painted it shell pink, which makes it even more exciting for me. I remember telling you the last time you were here, how jealous I am of that shell pink, uh, finish. Oh yeah. I love it. And then, um, this is a strat. It was the first guitar I ever got to pick out. So when I was 13, mm -hmm. my dad took me to guitar center and I loved blink 182. So I wanted to get a strat and I got this, this sweet strat. Would you mind demonstrating the telly for us while you have it there? Of course. There it is. You might be lagging right. a little bit. Well, on before my we get to today's episode on the cage system, I, I want to take a quick moment and acknowledge that the guitar world. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm repeating myself. Uh, sorry. I, let me just. I, I lost a little connection there. That's my fault. Sorry, everybody just hang with me. Sorry. So I mentioned at the top, we were talking about the cage system, and I believe it's a great way to unlock the mystery of the fretboard in a very logical way. The charm of it is that it's based on five simple chords, and Molly's going to help us understand how we use it today. And as always, we're live, obviously. So if you have any <laughs> questions during the episode, drop them in the comments. Now, Molly, uh, let's talk about the case system and, and what it is and how we use it. So we like to kick off with some playing though. So could you play a little something that demonstrates the cage system? And then afterwards we'll discuss what we just saw. Oh, heck yeah, yeah. I'm gonna okay. play, you guys should recognize this, but doing my own little twist on it. Thank you. 
Well done. Well done. Okay, buddy. So let's start at the beginning. Can you give us a quick definition of what exactly the cage system is? Yeah. So I, I've noticed a lot of my students and even myself, I was overwhelmed by it. I was like, what is this thing that, that sounds like this, like, like the quadratic formula or something? So what it actually is, it's uh, information we already know, and it's a way of mapping uh, the guitar neck. So using the C chord, A chord, G chord, E chord, and D chord, which spells caged, and um, it's a way of seeing your instrument. So those those five shapes connect on the guitar. So like your C shape connects to your A shape. Notice these are all C chords. I'm playing five different C chords using a C, A, G, E, and D shape. G shape, E shape, D shape, and then guess what happens? The D shape connects back to the C shape. Perfect. Okay, now how, how experienced do, uh, does somebody have to be to use it? Yeah, and I, you know, it's good to know those open chords, you know, your basic chords. So my initial reaction is like, oh, you should be an intermediate and beyond. But really, I think as soon as you start playing the guitar, it's a good tool to use to start thinking of the guitar that way as a, as a, as a map for your instrument up and down the fretboard. All right, speaking of, and I have students, uh, sometimes the, one of the things they ask me is, I, I want to start playing outside of the box. Can you speak to that? Yeah. And how, and how the cage system can help. I mean, it's interesting because, you know, guitar, we are so shape oriented. And I always say the, sh the cage mm -hmm. system is a way to use that to our advantage. So instead yeah. of getting stuck of like, oh, I know this bar chord and this bar chord, but like nothing in between. And you'll just solo in those areas and play those chords. It's a way to connect all those the extra spaces. Um, so using like the, you know, here's your like A shape and your E shape. Well, you can connect it with your G shape. And there it's like the empty space is connected. So we're using those Correct. shapes to our And I know that personally for me, my relation, right. My relationship with the cage system, I'm very Johnny come lately. I, I guess I had been using it all along and I didn't even know it. You know, if I was learning uh, a song uh, and later on in the episode, I'll demonstrate how uh, I learned a solo and used the cage system, but I didn't know it. Or even if I'm just improving uh, over, uh, if I'm playing a, a solo, people say, well, what scales, how do you know what scales to use? And the fact matters, I don't really. I just want to know what the core changes are and I'll play along with those changes all around the neck. And the cage system is, is, is how I'm linking that. Now, how did you use the cage system in the Hank Williams song that you just uh, played? Can you, I mean, can you just give us a, a snippet of a breakdown there? Yeah, so like even when I was playing the melody and when I was soloing, I was look I was seeing all those shapes and you know in open position but also like up here. So I was using all these different shapes like here I am in the C shape. And then like connecting that C shape to the A shape connecting to the G shape and the E shape. Like they all just, it makes it a lot more fluid. So I was seeing the shapes across the neck instead of getting stuck in one position. Right, right. So the cage system is really good. It's like I said, it's a logical method of figuring out where the notes lie on the fretboard using just a few simple chords. But the effect is incredibly helpful yeah. for some really fun techniques like playing riffs, soloing. So let's take a look at a song that employs the cage system in a classic riff. Yeah. You're on. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so Jumpin' Jack Flash, the Rolling Stones. Um, the cool thing is while it is in this one E shape, you know, knowing the cage system allows me to then play the riff in other positions too. For example, like here it is in the A shape. Or the D shape up here. In a higher octave. So even like when soloing, um, I could like quote the melody in different locations and not be so redundant using it in one place. But once again, back to that fluidity to, to move across the guitar neck. Cause you know, we always get stuck in one place, playing one riff, playing one scale, but it makes it just, uh, so you can move more seamlessly across your fretboard. Right. I know that sometimes uh, also I'll get a student and they're a little they can, almost afraid of going above the fifth fret it's like no man's land totally. and the cage system should help comfort them and say oh no there's you know exactly what's going on up here because you already know these five basic chords so um 
uh, you know, and, and the way to see the fretboard using shapes, you already know this helps us navigate the neck regardless of what key we're in. You just need to know your cage shapes and the roots off of the fifth and sixth string, essentially. Totally. Um, I, uh, let's play some more examples. And okay. remember, all examples that you're hearing today can be found on the Fender Play site. Um, so as soon as we're done with this episode, you can get on that site and look. Oh, Eugene, I think I think I uh, any of these riffs and solos and songs we're playing. We also have a cage system collection that will help you get Play my girl. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Eugene, you're getting your tech your technology is getting a little a little oh. sketchy. But that's what I'm happens caged. when you're alive. You're caged. That's you're right. Getting... That's right. <laughs> um I'll play my girl. Oh. Okay. So I'm gonna play my girl. Uh this is another great example. Please do. Okay, yeah, like do you the main riff. It's really cool because it actually connects two different positions of the cage shapes. And uh, once again, like Eugene was saying, it doesn't matter what posi what key you're in. So in the song, for example, this one connects the A shape to the G shape. You move a little forward with it. And it's just up your pentatonic scale, which is so cool. And then you go down to the, play the same riff in F. So now if we're thinking of those cage shapes, this F, that riff would be in like your E shape and your D shape because you're moving forward. Um, and the cool thing is, once again, you can play the riff in any of your cage shapes, which comes in handy. You know, maybe it's in a weird key and it, you don't want to play it down there. Maybe it's, um, maybe you just want to play it in a different octave because someone's already playing it there. So you can play it all over the guitar neck. can see I'm like going through all these different shapes playing that riff um, and I'm just visualizing the shapes like whether it's the C shape or that D shape you can see my D chord here <laughs> yeah so there's another example of how knowing your cage system um, can really help when trying to play play guitar well, it helps that since it's modular, since we don't rely on open strings at that point, we can kind of, if someone says, oh, I do this song half a step down or half a step up, it's, it's better for my voice. We're not in a panic. Um, we have a quick question from YouTube. Uh, Leah Jerome is asking, as a doctorate in guitar, do you really use the caged in real life applications? Oh my God. Yeah. I get really jazzed up when I talk about the cage system, you know, and it's kind of funny, similar to Eugene, I did not grow up. I didn't learn the cage system, but it's actually how I was thinking about the guitar. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of, the, the shapes serve as, as guide points. So, you know, I was just playing in C, so, you know, C, A, G, there are all these different C shapes. Uh, let's try it even, I'll show you in like a different key. Like if I'm in G, they all shift. So now my first op shape is my G shape, to my E shape, to my D shape. So whether I'm soloing, or, and like, like I'm, if I'm like playing like giant steps, I'm still thinking in cage because I, those shapes are connected to the chords for me. So it doesn't, it's not like just for, it's not a hoax. The cage system's real, but I can like, like here I'll navigate from one end of the guitar to the other. And I'm really thinking in shapes and I'll try to make that obvious to you guys when I do that. So like, I'll start down from the G shape and make my way back to the octave of the G shape. So I really am like using those shapes as a guide. Right. Now we have a question from Steven uh, uh, as a question for the doctor. What makes it a G shape? There are many G chord shapes or any shape for that matter, which I understand what he means, but. Yeah. Well, are you saying because yeah, like this is a G chord, this is a G chord, this is a G chord. So. Yeah. So. Um, but they're all a part of it. So I'm like, and mm, that's, I think my, my brain just knows like, I'll be in a different key that's not G because that way maybe it'll be easier to explain. But even if I'm like in C, I see this as a part of the G shape. I see this as a part of the G shape. I see the whole thing as a part of the G shape. So I think what it's not one, it's all, if that makes sense. Right, okay, and I wanna mention, 
uh, that uh, obviously we have Dylan Kalajuri, our, our curriculum guru is here as well. He's going to help us get in because he loves this stuff. He eats this stuff up for breakfast. He loves talking about this stuff. So we're gonna bring him in. Um, another question from the uh, Facebook community, Florin Dreika, um, uh, this is beautiful examples, uh, but how do I get from open C to the other C's? Yeah. Um, oh, open C. Oh, like shape wise, like, like what I was spell. doing, right? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, so maybe I'll just go through it a little bit slower, just real quickly. So people can understand what, like, cause I played five different C's using those shapes. Right. Right. So like here's open C and I'm going to play another C. So my C shape connects to my A shape. And now if you think of your A chord and you shift it up, and your root is now C, there's my A shape. G chord, but I'm gonna shift it up so my root's G, G shape. E chord, but I'm gonna shift it up so my root's C. And it's almost like putting a capo on your guitar, you know? And you use, yes. And, and I'll say, notice uh, to, the, uh, to the viewer asking the question, we use this four finger, the finger one, to kind of bar across and we that's how we travel this open c shape and mm -hmm. we can travel it up to other frets yeah no, I want, oh, oh no, no, no i want no, to add ahead. one thing because my I, i've noticed students will be like like oh my god so now i have to play this chord all the time and this chord like sometimes like it's not like you literally have to play the chord it's a way to visualize and organize information I'm so grateful you mentioned that because I do have to mention to my students, it's very unlikely you're going to play a C chord like this, but you're going to play a portion of it for sure. Dylan, uh, you're here for support. Can you show us some cage system in action, please? Yeah, sure. Let's see. Um, okay. Uh... goes on and on and on but I'm taking some parts of the melody and sticking it into cage shapes moving up so okay great and and so here's another uh question from the audience and Dylan uh, please chime in here as well yeah how how can you uh, this is uh from uh, someone named Harry how can you use the cage system for soloing or playing scales uh sure I can feel that one um you guys are doing a great job of talking about this. It's it's like this mystical by the way thank you Harry for the question it's this mystical concept right and um I think one one great way to get started at this is to know where the roots of each one of those chords, C, A, G, E, and D are on the sixth, fifth, and fourth string. So if you know where C is on each one of those strings, you can build the C chord, the A chord, as she, as she put, the G chord, the E chord, and the, and the D chord. And it's it's using those uh, those chord shapes as in reference to their conventional cowboy chord versions of them. So it, it's it's like uh, one other question was, hey, uh, I don't understand. It, it's G is can be played all over the place, and it's very true. G is just the chord G, B, and D, or the notes G, B, and D. But it's that conventional way of playing it that that yeah that he's illustrating right now too. So um, in terms of how you can use it for soloing, uh, let's say I was in that key of C. If I start at the highest one of these cage-shaped examples that I can do on this lovely uh, California series guitar. Uh, so that if I'm gonna move up to the highest shape I can think of. So it's, it's I'm moving from shape to shape. I'll do one really slowly so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> How about you, Molly? How do you kind of approach it with, with cage yeah. system? Um, yeah, so for soloing, like I said, it does go back to those shapes. So like, I'll even like play between a couple, two chords and uh, I'll go slow and call them out, but I'll go like C to G and notice, I'll, I'll and I'll say what shape I'm using. So I'll mm. start in C and here I am in the E shape, you know, and then I'll go to this C shape of G. And 
the G shape. I'll connect those two. So as, yeah, so I hope what you can see is that I'm playing these different shapes and then soloing around them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can can I add uh, one thing to what? No, to what if you I may, just, have, I have a. Oh. Sorry, mm -hmm. I was just going to add no, to no, that. Like a, a lot of what you're doing, that I that's awesome is she's connecting that the third to the fourth or the minor third to the major third, which we talk about in uh, several of the lessons. The awesome thing about Fender plays the cage system is wired in from the beginning, so you start out and you, when you get to the cage system later on, you know how to do it. But mm -hmm. um, it's it's basically she's she's doing a lot of a, uh, and then. Uh, so it's like, like you said, taking those same note shapes and moving them around the neck to be able to have versatility of tone and sound and agility as you move through. Yeah. Well, let's let's hear another song. Molly, can you play uh, a song that we actually played through a couple of weeks ago uh, or last, maybe it was last week. I can't remember now. Uh, I Fought the Law. And we're going to get to hear the uh, Stratocaster uh, this time yes. around, I believe. I was so excited. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> So this is going to be, uh, you, you have a kind of a, a different version of it. And uh, we're going to kind of just kind of watch Molly play this and keep an eye, eye on that fret hand and see how many times you can recognize a chord shape uh, along the way. I like that challenge. Okay. <laughs> um, I tune my guitar down a whole step who anyone, if anyone has their guitar in hand or has perfect pitch and they're like, what's going on? Okay. there tone painting with oh, the uh, yes indubitably oh, oh dear so clearly we hear the melody of the song and she never seemed to stop playing chords so that's kind of the magic of the cage system now uh, for you players watching at home we're going to assign some homework to help you on your path to doing um uh, to learning the cage system so these are some simple things you can work on but for more lessons and learn some of the the songs that you heard in today's episode make sure you check out fender play uh dylan molly or dylan you want to sign the homework here Oh sure, you, you, uh, never get, you never get the chance. Go ahead. I know. Thank. I thought you guys would never ask. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, okay. So for, if you're a beginner, the challenge is for the homework assignment this week: try an inversion of an open chord. So if you know a C, you could even start with just the first inversion of C. That's making it easier, right? Another harder version of C. So this is there's endless uh, versions of C on the site, and you'll see. But um. You'll see. Okay, moving oh. on. The intermediate. <laughs> uh, learn the riff ah. to jumping jack oh, flash dear. in oh, multiple dear. positions. Multiple positions. So not just one spot, but more than one spot. So that should be an interesting challenge right there. And advanced, learn the second solo to guitars and Cadillacs. The second solo. There's two solos in the song. The second one's real funny. I know if my, if I, I could show you real quickly if my connection is good enough. I don't know. Am I, you think it'll work? I don't know. So... Now, believe it or not, the cage system is involved. I played from the bottom of the neck all the way to the top and then back. 
and use certain positions to connect all those licks together. So that's very advanced. Uh, I think it's time that uh, we get to the uh, to the giveaways. And Dylan, you're already here. I'm here. I'm over. here. I'm ready. Let's do it. Yeah, so uh, thank you guys very much. This is a great. This is a really important topic, you guys. Oh, it's so mm -hmm. important. Caged. Uh, yeah. So for anybody that doesn't know, every week we give away some awesome piece of gear to a lucky Fender Play subscriber who gets at least three seven-minute sessions using Fender, Fender Play or AKA a streak. So you get a streak, you're automatically entered to win. Once you are once you win and I call your name, you get to pick from a, ch a choice of amps, guitars, ukuleles, basses, all kinds of stuff. There's a list of people who won and uh, what they picked and it's, it's a great thing to do. So uh, is everybody ready to hear who won this week? Does that mean it's time for a drum roll? I think it's time, I think it's time to do it. Here okay. we go. <laughs> Oh, Ian like S. Ian S. Congratulations, Ian. Fantastic. Uh, make sure you post you, in the community. Ian. Let us know what you want. Uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, congrats to, uh, to you, Ian. Enjoy your new guitar, bass, amp, whatever it is you choose. Uh, and Dylan, uh, this is the most important question of the the nation. Uh, depends on the answer to this question. What else do you have for us? Oh, it's just another day in my life. Uh, so basically, uh, we have, if you are a Fender Play a subscriber, which you should be, I, I sure hope you are, because it's free right now anyways. Uh, if you are, though, we've got the Caged Collection. <laughs> the Caged Collection. So basically, you can skip all anything you want to skip and go directly to this topic. If there's something you wanted to follow up on about what was talked about today with the wonderful Molly, you can do that. So check out the site. Always check the What's New tab because that's where everything that's new is, as well as songs and skills. And in this case, the new Caged Collection. Should Check that out and let us know what you think. Well, thank you very much, Dylan. And may I say a huge thank you to Molly Miller for coming by and helping us delve into the cage system. We're very, very grateful to have you here. Thanks for having me. It was really fun to be here. And, and uh, I don't know if I'm lagging. <laughs> it's always great to see you, buddy. And and uh, thank you for hanging in with all the technical difficulties and the lags and stuff. Uh, I knew we were in good hands. Uh, thank you for those great versions of those songs too. You yeah. know, it's such a, a unique way of playing through things. And I think it's really inspiring. So uh, is there anything you want to tell us that you have coming up? Um, you can keep an eye out on my on my Instagram, but there's a new record, a Molly Miller Tree record that'll be out next year. But yeah, Moody Mill, if you follow me on Instagram, then I'll, I'll keep you updated on all my stuff. Okay, we'll follow you there. To everybody out there, please keep safe. Keep practicing, and we'll see you next time. Everybody out on a G chord. Don't forget, Molly, you're detuned. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs>